Well, I was born and raised here, born here in Cuero, raised out in Pleasantville community, and where I grew up, uh, attended uh, Pleasantville Elementary School. Uh, from there, I came to Dole High School. I finished there in '49, and then remember, I went military, 1952 to '54. Well, I was drafted. Not that I wanted to go, but I was drafted in 1952. I was taking basic training at Camp Robbins, California for 16 weeks. From there, they sent me to Germany, uh, 17 and a half months over there. And, uh, so uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I worked for a battalion supply, medical battalion. <coughs> and, uh, I, I, I enjoyed the military. Uh, got to see some of the world things that I wouldn't have been able to see on my own. So, mm -hmm. I, so, uh, so I didn't get. Well, I made corporal as high as I got. They wanted to make something, make me sergeant, but I said, no, I don't want any more for. And uh, so I've been here in Quero all my days. And, uh, I worked at a feed store all my life, young, young days up until uh, a total of 50 years of handling feed. So, and I've seen people go and come, and also uh, I work with the churches here in Dewey County and Quero. This is my part of my life. So. That's about all I have to say this round. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm Dorothy Doris Brown Taylor. I was born here. I was born around 1927. I've been here all my life. And as growing up, uh, well, first we attended church, the Little Zion Baptist Church, which is a uh, well, a hundred and some years old already, mm. and we're still there. And as uh, we grew up, we grew up here, we had, uh, we was always, we grew up in a mixed community all the time, right down off of Hunt Street, the end of Hunt Street, and it would run on to, in the back of Smolix back in there. Mm -hmm. And that's where we grew up at until 19, in the 30s, my dad had a home built in the Sheraton like addition on Josephine Street. And we attended Dole School, elementary and high school. We had two buildings, one big building in the front and then the elementary was in the back. And as uh, for the work we did, well, my dad, we didn't live in the country, but the place where we lived was large enough to grow cotton, <laughs> and we could pick our own cotton, of course, and that was making a living, and raised, raised our own hog, cows, chickens, and so forth. And so we really didn't know what property was <laughs> until <laughs> Later years grew up as grown-ups mm -hmm. because everybody had food and when one would kill a hog, all the neighbors would get part of it <laughs> and when they would kill all the neighbors, they would return mm -hmm. and give what, what they did. Mm -hmm. And then as uh, we grew up, we had the uh, poultry houses here where we had worked women and men could work at Cuddy Hay mm -hmm. and Bells. They were out from Go uh, Nixon, I think, homes and woods or something mm -hmm. came from around Nixon. But they had uh, there where those apartments are now on Indianola Street and there, they had poultry houses there. Mm -hmm. And we worked there to make a living and also I did domestic work. I, I worked at uh, uh, for the Bramlets, and 
the doctors here, Dr. Death and them and all here in Quero. And so as uh, the children, as our children grew up and y'all, all of y'all, well, uh, intending school, y'all had to, had to go to Dole until they integrated in which we had good teachers there at, at Dole. And as the rural schools came in, we all just as one group of people. And we had to attend church services all about all day Sundays, whether we wanted to do it. So they are not, we had to, we had to go to church, mm -hmm. which we thank God for that, for that bringing up. And as around here in Quero, uh, I know so many of the people and so many are already gone on, but uh, we all got along good so far in our communities we did. Mm -hmm. Well, we played together. And so as now, we still, some of them are still living and we are just like one family. Mm -hmm. Then that day and time, we could give the neighbor the dough key, and they could give us their dough key. But now you better lock all your doughs mm -hmm. and keep your keys. <laughs> so that's about all for now. Okay. And My name is J.C. Mathis, Jr. I, I was born January 12, 1945, and uh, raised up in Quero. My, my dad was J.C. Senior was kind of a jack of all trades. He he worked for Brian Stubbs and Johnny Cobbage at the service station there. He worked across the street for Coot and Dick Cobbage with a tire shop, and uh, really good at what he did because I I'm, I remember as a little boy those farmers that came into town and had a tractor tire that was on flat. They always would ask him to send J.C. to fix my flat. So mm -hmm. he, I, I've ridden down every country road in in DeWitt County because he knew them all, and, and he got a very big kick out of riding the back country. I don't know, we, just on Sundays, he just liked to to drive the back countries, and he knew everybody's mailbox and where they, who lived down each each one of those roads. So. He he was also a small businessman. Well, like I say, he was a jack of all trades because he 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 ran a small business uh, at the time. Then we call them beer joints. He had several. He had a barbecue business that had done really mm -hmm. well. He had his regular customers that every Saturday they they would have to they they would turn their order in. It was a weekly thing where they wanted a hind quarter uh, of a lamb. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they wanted. Uh, a uh, section of ribs from from the the pig, mm -hmm. uh, so he had a really really good business there, and he would go to work at one of the other jobs in the morning, and he had several of us. But I, I was always I was the oldest kid in the family, so I would uh, I would always have to go down on Saturday mornings to be with whoever was gonna gonna watch the meat. He would get up, start the fire, put it on. But then there would be some people to watch it, and I was always one of those. <laughs> uh, he, he also was a cowboy, and uh, I think uh, many people my age and 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 some of them a little younger, a little older, will remember his horses. One of his favorite horses was a big black horse. I I, I forget how many hands, but they usually measure the 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 horses. Uh, height in hands and I, I forget mm -hmm. that but this was a big black horse and and there were four of us in our family four siblings and and uh, we would put a belt or a string or something around this horse's neck and we would go to Bonnet's grocery and, and but we we would always have to find something to climb up on to get <laughs> back on the horse <laughs> but uh, we never we never tied the horse we never we 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 parked her, <laughs> for lack of a better word, out front, mm -hmm. and she stayed there until till we came out of the store. But I, I, I guess what I remember most at the rodeos, uh, that was that was always a group around this horse because my dad could have him counting or or laying 
you know, on his back or standing on his backside. I mean, with just a command. So uh, really, really a good horse. And I remember we, we kept him until he was uh, about 20 years, started going blind, and there were still a lot of people uh, wanted that horse. End up selling him to some rancher out in Gonzales County. I guess the other thing I, I, rem I remember too about growing up in, in my family, uh, uh, again, still talk about my dad being a jack of all trades. You know, as a little boy, I was a little guy, and it was always hard for me to get a job. There weren't too many jobs, you know. The jobs for blacks were, were washing dishes or delivering or working at the service station, mm -hmm. things like that. And it just wasn't too many of those kind of jobs. So I always had trouble getting jobs at a place like that. But my daddy would contract hay, so he would haul hay. And uh, as a little bitty boy, well, then when we get the truck to the field, then I was the guy that could uh, drive the truck, you know, put it in oh. low, low, they call it, <laughs> and just keep it going straight and, and haul. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and the hay haulers would load the truck up. But as soon got as soon I, I grew to was larger, and man, I think the worst thing, the hardest job I've ever had, was crawling up into those little bitty buns, oh. trying to stack that hay up high as you could get. That that was a job. But uh, in in my growing up, I guess the thing that I, I I remember most is is the older people in the community. Like I said, my my dad ran a, a beer joint. And the old timers, when they they got their checks on the on the end of the month, they came to town and they would stay in town all day. And then I and I knew, uh, I, in fact, that's the other thing. I, I was driving at at about 12 years old, and uh, you know I I drive everywhere. I had to stick a pillar in the <laughs> under my rump and mm -hmm. one in my back so I, so I could sit up Great. tall enough. And 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 one of my things regularly was taking my grandmother and my great-grandmother to town on Saturdays. On Saturdays, there was a, a little cafe on Main Street called Pleasant's. And, oh, and, yeah. and during that time, most of the blacks lived in the rural, so they would come to town on Saturday so that they would be able to go to football game on, on Saturday night. So they would spend the day in town going to Woolsworth, and, and then they would all congregate at the Pleasant's hamburger shop. Uh, you could dine inside or out under the trees, and, and they would visit with each other uh, all, all day on Saturday. So my job was to uh, to bring my grandmother and my great-grandmother to town at, at 12 years old. So And, and I, I had the car. I guess, too, one of the, one of the good things, uh, again, I'm saying a lot about my dad, but he knew everybody in town, see, because Ray McCuskey, the chef, uh, well, we uh, we had his horses on our place, and uh, Jesse Taylor, the chief of police, for many years, uh, uh, my dad knew them well, so I know they would see his little car going through town, and they they knew it wasn't him driving, but they they never looked twice, so that that was a good thing about. But uh, this year, uh, I found that that the elderly people were really kind to us. And they yeah. they all had advice for everybody's kid, That's right. you know. And I, I had an uncle; he was my favorite uncle. Uh, on holidays, we would have we would have family dinners at my grandmother uh, and and my great grandmother, and my my grandmother's brothers and sisters would all come home, and and uh, you know she had these four or five uh, uh, brothers, four brothers I guess, and a sister. But our favorite uncle was a guy named Mac, and everybody would laugh when they, and we were so glad when Uncle Mac come because <laughs> we could have fun with him. Wasn't nothing. I mean, he did it in a respectful way, and uh, one of his, I can't think of the term he, he used, but he would always tell you from the beginning, uh, he wasn't worth the bullet that it would take to kill him or something. <laughs> but he would always keep us going, and he would tell it like it was. But also, I, I, I mentioned the people that came to town on the weekends, uh, I mean, when they got their check. Uh, these guys, uh, I, 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 I knew about, by the time it started getting dark, I, I know that I knew who my clientele was, and I drive up, and they, 
and walk into place and they would say, Sonny, are you ready? And I said, yes, sir. So anyway, I would take them all and, and I never asked them for anything, but they always say, uh, they, first they would ask me how much they owed me. And I, and I, I'd say, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> well, really, because they spent, they spent a good portion of it with my daddy all day long. Mm -hmm. and, and, but anyway, they would more than reimburse me for what I did. And, and, and uh, I can remember going to work with some of these guys and, you know, and when it come time to split up the money, uh, we go in one of these country stores to buy, uh, well, they did, I, I didn't ever like beer. I had a chance to drink all the beer that I wanted, but to buy Coke and juice and stuff, uh, crackers and, you know, the things that the people work in the country snack on for lunch, they never would let me buy anything. And, and, I, and I'll, I'll never forget this as long as I live. And they would always tell me, now, Sonny, you keep your money. You make some of yourself. You know, so that has always stuck with me, and, and mm -hmm. I will always be gracious to the older people that live here. Sure. And any time you saw them, any time uh, you, uh, you, you needed something, it didn't matter if they were your people or anybody else's people, but if you got in a bind, you, you didn't worry about who, who to stop to ask for help if you couldn't get your, your parents there. Mr. Brown is going to talk more about about the the Edgar Hoheim concrete area because uh, uh, he he was reared out there he and his family and 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 uh, I know my grandparents were all from that area but it happened after the emancipation well then when the slaves were freed they they purchased a little land in in that area a still rich fertile soil and and they they worked the the land for many years, and finally, Yoakum and and uh, Quero started industrializing a little more. So people either moved from those communities, uh, either to Yoakum or to 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 Quero. So uh, Mr. Brown will tell you more about that. But to tell you a little bit about the the Hopkinsville area, n no, well, not of any of us in this group are from Hopkinsville, but uh, that was a slave owner named Pleasant that that owned a lot of land in, in Hopkinsville and and, uh, and uh, well had had a had a quite a number of slaves too. I've seen that number, can't remember right now. But but uh, they they came from Virginia. The the Pleasant family that owned the group came from Virginia. They settled out there. So and he brought some slaves with him and, and others came from from a state uh, uh, closer, so uh, one of his one of his uh, slave families were, were the Hopkins family, and and there were quite a number of them. So when uh, again after uh, emancipation, and uh, Mr. Pleasant, which was also a decorated decorated uh, military person. His, his father or grandfather, in fact, I've seen pictures, uh, they, so, they sold or donated one of the, the Hopkins men uh, some of the land. Now, uh, again, I'm not sure. I'm told that they bought it, and then I've heard some say sold. So we'd have to get somebody from that area to expound on that. But in turn, they, they developed the community out there, and they called it Hopkinsville. Uh, in Hopkinsville, uh, there there was a school. In fact, it was the last black school to close in Dewey County. Black rural school to close in in Dewey County, and and that was about 1957. Or uh, one of the teachers that worked out there was a uh, Miss Zula Houston that was from the area. So uh, up until 1957, I think they had just the elementary kids. I don't know, it, it wasn't a lot of them, but it, it was enough of them to keep the school open so that they wouldn't have to be, to be bused to town. So that, that area had uh, a lot of, lot of other farmers and, and ranchers, and, and there are still many of the people from the Hopkins, the blacks from the Hopkinsville area that, uh, that have, still have land out there. 
Mr. Brown, you want to tell us about the concrete area, your OIB, the people out there? Yes, well, that was what I call my, you know, stomping ground. Uh, they had a school there, uh, Pleasantville Cemetery, um, and uh, my grand, my grandparents owned land, land out there, and the road is called Brown Road. Uh, also, uh, up above was concrete area, and there was Hoheim. We had relatives lived all in those uh, communities. Uh, then there was Edgar, which uh, at one time had a store and a cotton gin. And uh, then there's uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church. I think it's supposed to be the oldest church in the, uh, this around this area. So, uh, so. Uh, so it, it was very enjoyable with me uh, growing up in that area. So uh, anything else you might, I might can answer by questioning me, then, then I can really speak out on my own. Mm -hmm. so just got something you want to ask me, ask me. Uh, I, I, he brought up one thing that I'd like to expound on a little bit. In that area, uh, at the Mount Zion Church, in, in the, in the uh, in the 1930s, uh, they have records showing that the membership there were 600. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and one of the pastors out there was a guy named S. A. Pleasant. Yes. It, the, uh, S. A. Pleasant uh, ha went on to have a tremendous uh, uh, following. He 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 moved on to Macedonia in town, Macedonia Baptist Church here in in town, and then he moved up to Seguin, but he didn't stay there long. He went to Houston uh, to a church that had, uh, when he got there, had 200 and, and oh, less than 300 people. And when and, and after he had been there two years in the, in the 40s, he had what they call a mega church then. He had 8,000 people uh, uh, in, in those less than 10 years that attended the church. And I've been fortunate enough to visit with... Uh, some people at his church that knew him, and they they since built another church, and and the guy they everybody could see the calling. You know, even in town here, everybody know he was ordained to be be something special, and God. Uh, well, I think he was something like the the third moderator yes, of Mount Zion, uh, uh, Mount Zion Mount District Zion. Association. Mm -hmm. So that. He was one of the one of the prominent people that not that there aren't many, but he was one of the prominent people that came out of that area. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, my parents and grandparents, as you uh, spoke of, came from uh, uh, Gonzales up in that area. Uh, the Brown Prince Brown Senior family, mm -hmm. and my mother's family. They came from Mission Valley and ended up, most of them, in Victoria and Franklin's. So we had a large group, a large group of uh, family members in which we had our reunion until our family reunion started from uh, the Christmas and New Year dinners. And we had it for 30 some years until about two years ago due to illness and we stopped, but we hope to start back, and which we had a joyful time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel, <laughs> I, I, it, we started talking about families, and, and I know my first, uh, I, I talked a lot about my dad a while ago, but, but I have to say something about my mom, the, mm -hmm. the hardest working woman I knew, and, and always concerned about others. Mm -hmm. And even in a, a last day, man, her her life was making sure she had something for everybody in the neighborhood uh, that came by after school, the little kids I'm talking, make sure that there was something cold or a snack for them. Mm -hmm. So all of, uh, she worked uh, at the Bowman Hospital first in the dietary department, 
and then she moved on out to Quirrell High School and spent some like 43 years, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, she quiet in nature, but so much your people first and always concerned about others. Always put herself last. So mm -hmm. I, I, I have to say that about, about my mom. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to talk a little about schools? The school, what it was like when you were brought up, <laughs> when you were coming up? Yes. Well, that at Glenville, it was just a one, one room school. Everything was uh, one teacher. No, we did have two teachers, but uh, everything was in one room. And we start with first grade and going up to the eighth grade, mm -hmm. but um, also. Uh, at Dole, uh, I happened to be in the last class of old Dole, 1949. It was just eight of mm -hmm. us, and I think we all still living. So, and, uh, mm -hmm. and and also, I played a little football. And in 1948, we we won the uh, district camp championship. Mm -hmm. so, Well, I have to say that Mr. Brown came from from quite a uh, football uh, back. Well, actually, he was the background. He was one of the early ones. I don't know if his uncles or anybody played, but his family were were great athletes. He he had brothers and 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 first cousins, right. and, and I, I, they were they were all exceptional athletes. And as we look back through the history uh, of the the old schools uh, where you mm -hmm. see that uh, the, the coach here, they coached 10 years and lost five games, and and uh, uh, and and there were stretches where where high schools before they start uh, before they start looking at the numbers to put you in a certain district, you just play you just play teams that you could find mm -hmm. to play, and many times. Uh, uh, we we played teams that were from San Antonio or Corpus mm -hmm. Christi, or, uh, uh, a Bay City or Taylor, uh, so uh, pretty much outman as far as the number of students in the school, but uh, uh, very much so were able to hold on. I say I own now. I wasn't then, but I, <laughs> I, I I'm looking at the records now. I'm reading a lot of that stuff. My my memory was like I said. I graduated in 1963, and and uh, this was it was it was about uh, uh, I think it, it it was in in 1940 I mean 50 57 that that we we maybe a little early that that we organized that the school district organized band for. Tennis and and some usually the sports were just uh, football, baseball, and and uh, track and field. Uh, but uh, I I guess some of my best days, my best remembers because I I was I was in the band and we had this guy that that uh, one of the the principal hired Mr. Anderson hired a guy named David Hegwood, and and this guy well he was an ex uh, ex marine. Uh, a musician, and man, we were all in awe about this guy because uh, uh, we had some good musicians that you know in, in, after you played three or four years, uh, and but this guy could sit down with any any section leader in the band and play the horn that they were playing uh, better than the section leader. <laughs> Never seen anything like that except uh, at at Prairie View. Uh, we had a band director there could do the same thing, but this guy wrote all the music. Mr. Hegrup wrote all the music for us. The 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 Friday night shows. Uh, he would he would write the song. We would have three days to learn them, and he would write all the different parts. Uh, quite a musician. Mm -hmm. But I guess the thing that I remember most, uh, we were, uh, and I, I've said this as I am to you, but we. We were fortunate enough to to be invited to some large parades like uh, 
Houston Tillerson used to have a parade in, in Austin. Uh, uh, we would go to the Buccaneer Parade in Corpus Christi, and, and the Battle of Flowers was one of our favorite. And we went to Lawton, Oklahoma, to a parade. And, and in Lawton, in the Battle of Flowers, there were there weren't any other African American bands but us. And, and uh, uh, at, for for practice. Because the the parade route would be eight, nine, ten miles. <laughs> so uh, during the week, well, I mean, whether we were going to parade or not, uh, one of the things uh, after we got our little performance down, well, we would have to go to the street, and we march all over town. <laughs> I mean, I mean, from yeah. south side to north side to. To uh, to the Heaton Street, I, I, and and uh, you know uh, uh, again, and it wasn't a, it, it it wasn't any play, you know. You march to the to the drum cadence, and every so often, you know, you, they would give you the drum roll, and you you played a you, uh, a particular song, you know, had a group of songs that you play in rotation, and I mean that was work, mm -hmm. and, and you did that until it started getting dark, and yeah. and then you would start back to. So, you know, we think about it. It was hard work at the time, but uh, uh, I, I don't think after a while that that anybody complained. It's, it it was fun too, and I, I guess the other thing that 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 uh, it amazed me uh, a after school. You know, not a lot of us had had cars. Hardly no kid had a car, but some families didn't didn't have cars. So after after practice, well. Uh, uh, we one year we had kids from from uh, Goliad, and then the kids from Westolf. The high schoolers always mm -hmm. went to school with us. Uh, that helped our numbers, but the Goliad students really helped our numbers. They were good athletes too, and, and I, I, I want to tell you, we sure did hate when they moved them to Victoria, because we couldn't beat Victoria anymore. <laughs> yeah. So. But but what I wanted to say, you know, after those folding events, well, you would get home, man, sometime one o'clock at night, and we would we would always make room for those kids from out of town. That they stay they they spent the night with somebody, and and I tell my kids this all the time. They don't believe it, but sometimes we would have so many kids there that you couldn't sleep long wise in the bed, you have to turn crossways, <laughs> you know. But everybody, you know, mm -hmm. always everything was in order, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, you knew what the rules were and you, you played within the rules. So th those were good times. And, and then, too, we had a couple places that we went for uh, entertainment. We had the, we call it the park where had a little jukebox, and you could go and dance and sing and buy hamburgers and, and sugar cookies and those kind of things. But uh, when it came time to go home, uh, in in the area that we lived out off the Cheapside Road, if you went down Palmy Street up to, oh, man, I forgot. Well, Evers is one of the streets that run across mm -hmm. there. But it, anyway, what we would do, we would all leave at the same time. So we would walk a, a, a distance, and, and then we would we would be missing four or five kids. We know who they were. And then then we walk her, uh, another distance, uh, uh, and then we would be missing three or four more. And then we would get over in the Ever Street area, and then we would be missing fifteen or twenty more because they lived on Evers, the Rances Pass, and mm -hmm. those little streets of Charles Street. And then we'd walk out a little further, uh, and then we would be missing six or eight. And then that last stretch <laughs> was kind of scary because it was dark out there, <laughs> and, 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 it, and it would just be you and your brother and your sister. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a little scary, but nobody, you know. But we would we would all take care of each other, and we, you know, we we walked with each other. We, I, I, I don't know the term that. Uh, that the old timers used to say would be pieced away, mm -hmm. meaning part of the way home with it, with all the other kids. So that those those were good times. And and if you had an old car, man, it, <laughs> if they had a seatbelt mm -hmm. lock, we would have they been wouldn't. in trouble because <laughs> many as you could get in the lap in in each other's lap or in the trunk, uh, that that was the other thing growing up. Uh, that was the drive-in. 
So anyway, if you want to go in the drive-in, you pay by the car load. Yes. So then you fill up the front and the trunk and everything <laughs> else and went to the drive-in for that dollar or a dollar and a half. And I, those, those were great times. Uh, I, I tell my grandkids about it. They, they frowned. Y'all didn't do that, but but those, those were great times. I, I, I would like somebody to talk about the association in, in the time of the year. Well, we, we have the... Uh, Mount Zion District Association here, and his children, well, it was in July was the Congress and August Association, and which uh, uh, all the children, we had a uh, Quero night, and then that would be all the Quero uh, youth would participate in the programs, and then children would come from Corpus Christi and all through the week it went through and it used to go through from Monday till Sunday mm -hmm. and then it, it stopped just for, uh, for a few days to go through and at the time uh, well, we, we would walk because we, we didn't have a car then and we walked from across town <laughs> and of course them that had cars at the time uh, they was I don't know if y'all remember that they used to put stickers on yeah. that. They pay to go in. Yes, I remember that. They would pay to go in and they said they was paying for that property out there and they would charge a fee like 15 cents or something to go in on the ground but if he's walking you didn't have to pay anything and and so in which the Mount Zion District Association is still going on through the years it has been it's a hundred and some years mm -hmm. Oh, like that and so then uh, as you was talking about when the school the children we would uh, when our children was coming to Dole and all too we would bring children home they'd be walking and we'd bring children home and then after they went to high school up there we still we wouldn't leave children walking then the dog going home we would bring them home and as the seat belts, if the cars had seat belts then, they, they, you'd have to have a bus. <laughs> you, you couldn't. Mm -hmm. but you could put as many children in the car as, as, you, as could get in. Mm -hmm. And we came from San Antonio with our children. My husband and, and his mother lived in San Antonio then. And we came with uh, eight uh, more in the car. <laughs> But no seat belts. Mm -hmm. Well, no seat belt order then, because you couldn't ride then. If it's seat belts, we couldn't, because I could really put them in my car. We could have car loads. Mm -hmm. well, let, let me say a little about the association too. Uh, this this was a group of churches, and in fact, I I found uh, the I found a 1935 history. Well, man, oh. I, I'm amazed at how they put the their their financial reports together you know mm -hmm. and they had more than 118 churches in this association mm -hmm. and during during the time uh people uh, uh like people in, in in the community would rent out rooms they had their regular friends or uh, uh people that they knew uh, sometimes kin folks or church members from mm -hmm. from the churches uh uh, not only the area, they were all the San Antonio, Corpus Christi, yeah. uh, you know, and besides all the little towns around, but those were the major cities that that the uh, that the people came from. And, and on the grounds out there, every year they they would run electric poles out there. So the vendors, in order to to uh, to serve the people, so they didn't have to go to restaurants or weren't that many anyway. They would set up. Uh, they would mm -hmm. set up a little booth all around the the, the facility, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you. It, I don't know how how many acres that is, mm -hmm. but they would be. Uh, if you turn loose of a little one's hand, you could lose them really. Oh yeah. <laughs> and 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 naturally, uh, mm -hmm. it was a it was a way for the for the young folks to get to socialize with with the. Uh, with their peers from other cities right. and towns, we didn't 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 go to church all that much. They had our night. We participated, but mm -hmm. we were waiting to to, to get a uh, uh, yeah. away so that we could walk and and meet mm -hmm. the people in the crowd and 
and I tell you the photographers would sit up out there and you know you, you don't see that stuff anymore uh, except for movies where where a photographer got a little building where you go in and yes. and, and uh, he pulled the little curtain behind you and then you see the flash well, anyway, that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of picture you would get. But surprisingly, mm -hmm. they turn out some pretty good, pretty good uh, photos. Afternoons, uh, the Basil lived up on the Gonzales Highway, and uh, get to go play with the Battles boy brothers and sisters, and mm -hmm. we would hunt and uh, we had BB guns, we'd shoot birds, and and uh, you know. There's a lot to do out there in the country, you know. and uh, then you know we uh, we had a lot of chores to do, and mm -hmm. so I think everybody, all the kids, had some chores they had right. to do, and, and then uh, and then we had done farm work. My folks, they like they raised best about everything, you know, cotton, mm -hmm. corn, mm -hmm. tomatoes, you know, all of that, and they wasn't lazy. They kept they kept us busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, we raised the family. We had uh, six children, and we all everybody finished school, went to college, went to service. Two of my sons in service, and yes, well, my oldest son was fixing to uh, go to uh, Vietnam in '68 when his dad got real sick, and so they sent him back from California and stationed him in San Antonio until after my husband passed, and then uh, they sent him on, and he was wounded over in Vietnam, and so. We had a busy life and working. And we were, our, my husband worked and I worked. He had his own uh, business, his mechanic, and and uh, I worked in private homes for doctors here in Quero and in poultry house. And so we made a living, and everybody. Went to school when when my husband passed. We was four children still in school, and so everybody went on and finished and been to college and making a living. And two sons as ministers. Our youngest son is the past. Our pastor, Little Zion Baptist Church. He's the pastor now, mm -hmm. about seven, eight, yeah, seven years or so. So. Anyway, we all, we made it. Uh, it was work, and we tried to taught them how to work. Work, they would like to go in the summer. Somebody would come, they would let them, we'd let them go to the country and, and pick cotton, because uh, <coughs> y'all was out there, you know, your dad and them. Mm -hmm. And they picked out there, and they would wait for Saturday morning, they would bring them their money, and they was glad to get their check. The money on Saturday morning from picking cotton, so they they learned how to do that too, to make an honest living, and so everybody's they've done good so far, so good still. Full, full, full living, and yeah, we had two stepchildren, and they passed away, but anyway, everybody they grew up in Quero, and and so they made good Quero's good time. After all, <laughs> we all we all been here all our lives, and of course uh, they moved. Some of them moved to San Antonio and like that, but still, uh, this is home. You know, everybody tried to make an honest living, but too, you know, we had fun too. That that there the the uh, the SP picnic, you know, that was that was their time. And I, uh, oh, yeah. where 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 once a year the people that work for the road uh, for the railroad would have these gatherings and and, and again a big gathering for the, and uh, two of our local musicians was a guy named two guys named Tugger and Sylvester and they played uh, 
They guitar. Get, well, it's a fiddle and a... Guitar. I don't know what the other one called. Was it, was guitar. A guitar? it was a guitar. It was a guitar, guitar. guitar and a fiddle. And, and I tell you, man, they could, they could really entertain. And, and uh, you know, I was a little boy then, but <laughs> I used to like to see those old times. They, you know, they, they, they really had fun with that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was, uh, and, and I'll tell you one of the other things that we used to do, too. Uh, uh, some of us didn't go to church every Sunday. I, I went to Sunday school, <laughs> but, but then in the evening, for many years, as a young man, as a, as a college kid, uh, uh, we uh, that we had a summer league baseball team, and I have some pictures, in fact, in the car. And I was hoping that that Miss Blackwell was here because her husband was one of the one of the uh, members of that baseball team. But uh, but but uh, anyway, on Sunday evenings uh, we we had baseball games in in the park. Well, not only in the park, we went to San Antonio to Corpus to. Uh, to Woodsboro, to uh, we even would play at McFadden in Victoria, and, uh, and small towns around. Really, some good quality baseball because in in the summertime that there was a coach here, uh, several of them that that played with us. I remember a guy Underwood, great big guy, uh, David Atkins. If uh, I don't know if you know David Atkins from here. Uh, uh, and, and then, then we had guys that that were in school that would come home and play in the summer. Uh, uh, Cornell McMillan from York, I mean from West Off, mm -hmm. good pitcher, pitched uh, at Prairie View. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we 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 would uh, we would uh, we would uh, have some pretty pretty high quality baseball games. You uh, better than you would think. And and. and uh, Sometimes we, we, we would have people that, that would want to play with us, like uh, Mr. Barnett here that ran the cafe had a cousin named Archie Schooler. The guy could have played, he could have played in a lot of places. I'll tell you, one of the best that I've ever seen. And uh, uh, Jimmy Crane, I know y'all know, Jim, if you stop him now, he'll, he'll still tell you about his uh, experience as the first baseman for that team for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that that and and we had our cheerleaders and and I would hope my cousin here would tell you a little bit about, about these ladies, but that was three ladies. One of them was named was Fanny Hopkins, and her son was was the umpire. The, that that was another uh, and and two of her friends, uh, two of her friends were a lady named Nora Dupree, which was the aunt of Professor Dole. Oh, yeah. And, and then another one of her friends was Miss Gladys Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then that was Maddie Bell Carter. Now, if you ever wanted a bunch of cheerleaders, you should have heard those ladies. And I'll tell you, they, they, they were the funniest bunch that I've ever heard. And, and, uh, and, and sometime a word would slip <laughs> that, that they probably shouldn't have said, but, it, it, you know, they'd laugh it off. Everybody would laugh it off, but... It, it was that was our Sunday evening uh, mm -hmm. activity uh, uh, was to go to the to Quero Gobbler, well actually we call ourselves Quero Black Gobbler baseball team. In fact, I, I found and I was gonna again Miss Miss Blackwell that was gonna be here. Her husband Oscar was was the left fielder, and I found an old poster. What they did they made the posters. And then every week on the bottom of there, they'd write, all, they'd write who the competition was and where the game was going to be. So I found one mm -hmm. of those that I have to bring, and maybe we, we'll have to photo her sometime. But uh, that was one of the things we, we, uh, we used to do, I, I mean, during my growing up time. Mm -hmm. But I, I understand, too, just from talking to the older people, and I was hoping Mr. Brown tell us uh, about, about the rodeos out in, in Pleasantville, about the man that had the mule that go around the tree to make their syrup. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's a lot of good the stories. Mule, yeah, yeah. But we, because we, we didn't have rodeos too much, so yeah. Mr. Well, Thomas Tom, Kelly. Thomas Kelly, yeah. Oh, I remember him. 
Yeah. I, I guess the reason I'm saying these things, uh, I wasn't old enough, but I've heard them from some of the older people yeah, there. And, okay. I, and I know Mr. Brown was out there. That's yeah. why I keep putting it on his back. Mr. Brown's memory again. <laughs> the, the, okay. Well, and we also, we had attended on uh, summertime, we would go to the Rialto down here, mm -hmm. the right. Rialto Theater. Right in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Was here? This is the building it was in. Yeah. yeah. Rialto and, and hence to that uh, the little store, the concession thing downstairs. Mm -hmm. And the children could sell soda water bottles on on uh, summer, Wednesday. winter, summer, and like that, and come to the Rialto with two with bottles. bottles. Two bottles. Yeah. They let you in. And that was fun for them. Mm -hmm. Well, what? And what? It, they picked up. It wasn't grass on the street either. Mm -hmm. They kept it to go to the movie. Uh, I, I'd like to say a little bit more about our school. I'm not getting the story yet, but uh, uh, one of the things about the, uh, the the school too, when it was with Dole, uh, uh, again, I I and and I have I do have a list of of the the families and 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 their children in, in my possession. But uh, in our biggest numbers, I think we were a little over 300. This, and again, I'm talking about 1 through 12. We had something like 378, our biggest numbers. And then they dwindled down from, 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 from there. Uh, but I, I have to say, too, that, that our booster clubs, you know, and it's like anything else. A lot of people didn't go to Booster Club meeting, but that if that was a fundraiser of some kind, you could get the participation. The little business owners would pitch in there fifty dollars or whatever, and, and the the community people that didn't do anything were, were there to help out. So uh, uh, I we saw, and and I'll always be a, be appreciative to the the environment around town because I, I, I saw, uh, and I think many of us did, saw a community that, that really, really did pull together. And I, I like to say too, on Sunday evening, we, uh, the older group, man, uh, they, they had friends that would come from everywhere and I, I would always be thrilled to see some of my some of our seniors, when they deck out with their suddenly go to meeting stuff and 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 stop by the cafes to cool off a little bit and <laughs> and meet their Victoria and their Yoakum mm -hmm. and their San Antonio friends and and especially around holidays, those were those were were really really fun times. Oh yeah. Uh, in my teenage years, uh, we had a place called Scott's Place. And it was down where the feed store is now, and and uh, it was ran it was ran by Dorothy Scott and, and Warner <laughs> Scott, mm -hmm. and they would have bands on the weekend, and you couldn't drive down West Main uh, uh, when there was a band playing there, and I remember even before I was old enough to go in there. <laughs> After we leave the teenage place, we go be people. We go watch through the winter mm -hmm. to to watch the people have fun and, and dance and all. But that went on for many many years. Mm -hmm. I liked the the unity, and and I think you probably heard that a couple of times during some of the comments I've made. It, it was how the the people stuck together, mm -hmm. and you know, and I. I you know, I could talk a lot, but I want to hurt. I don't want to talk too much. But but I, I know some people. I, I, I tell you, my dad and Arthur Barnett were were fishermen, and, and uh, uh, they uh, well, my, my, I told you earlier, my dad worked for the cottages, and they had the the the, uh, the land going out towards Hellgate Bridge, and there's a dam there. So anyway. From the dam was a good fishing place where my dad and Arthur fished, and they would go get these. We call them cow cake from the oil mill, and they put in these nets, which were illegal. But anyway, <laughs> and they would have so many fish in those nets every day that 
they would have to come get, well, I, I live close to, so they'd have, my dad have to come get me, and we'd have to get help to get those nets out of the, the water because, in, you know, and the boat was a little bitty. It was scary, but they would, and, and i tell you what they would do. They would sell a few fish till they, till they got a few dollars, and then they would give the rest of them away. And this happened as long as I can remember. And that's, that's the same thing that I learned uh, from my, my grandfather. My grandfather lived uh, a mile from us, and, and they, he, he, he only job he ever had was farming, too. But they, they would go hunting, and he had a, a couple of uh, hunting buddies with him. And uh, one of them was named Moe's Pickings. <laughs> and, and there was another mm -hmm. one named Fred Campbell, and that was Sunny Green and Noisy Green. Mm -hmm. And and the odd thing about them, they called each other Cindy. You know, now they they could they would be sitting around and, and you know drinking their coffee or uh, the little shop that they had in the booth. They never had a bottle bigger than this. That's that's the that's the biggest bottle they would buy. But they would sit around and they talk and have fun. But they called each other Cindy. You know. Uh, I, I guess you had to look at the one you were talking about to, to have them the answer, but each one of them was Cindy. And I, I, and to, uh, today, I still don't know why they did. But, but again, the thing that I remember, because uh, Dorothy just said it, you know, if, 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 if it was hog killing or uh, whatever it was, that, that everybody in the, in the neighborhood been, uh, at That's least right. got a piece of it. Mm -hmm. So... My thing it was the unity that this community, and I still see it because I, I, I've been in Victoria more than 40, 45 years. And, and when, when I first started to work down at DuPont, there were several of us who, uh, from Quirrell that, that had moved to Victoria, worked at, at the different chemical plants and in the school district. And, you know, we joined this organization. And, and uh, and there, there were several of us in, in, in this organization. So, uh, uh, and, and we did a lot of good things. We were called Volunteers in Action. And we, we did things like, uh, uh, man, we, we, we mentored kids that, that couldn't have gone to college without the, the help. And we tutored them with, with uh, preparation for ACT. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we bought them clothes, slide rules, and I tell you, really, the results really, really showed too. Several, in fact, we have two that that are are, are doctor and uh, uh, an attorney. So you know, we I'm not I'm not bragging, but but the point that I'm trying to make is, is that the people uh, in Victoria could see the difference in us and, and their group. So you know, we were branded the Quero Connection. You know, so oh, it got yeah. where, it, it, and we did. We did. We took pride in what we did, and and, and many times the committees were were composed of, of just our group, just the uh, I say our group, the the people from here. So you know that that just reinforced that that uh, that 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 feeling that you've got grown up. You know, the pride that we showed growing up. We we still had it where wherever we go and, and I noticed that for many years uh, uh, here at, at the football team we uh, we we love to go to football games especially in the playoffs because you, that was a reunion yeah. you know everybody in the mm -hmm. area That's right. uh, uh, was there and man you know you went early and, and picked out a restaurant where you could meet and so so we did learn unity here and, and mm -hmm. I, I give that to to, to our four parents, and, and to, and let's be specific about it, if, in, you know, during the times they come up, it, it had to be that way, okay. you know. So, uh, but I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that this is home for me, and mm -hmm. and I'm quero proud. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I can say I am, too. I'm just... Proud of Quero. I had an opportunity to leave, but I just want to stay in Quero. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've stayed here all my life. It was I had five more siblings, and everybody moved away but me. Mm -hmm. But 
I go and visit, go visit, and we come yeah. back, and we all come home. We all, Quero is home. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the Shady Grove? Oh, well, yes. Um, well, at addition, when my dad and them bought land, it was nothing but pasture land down on Josephine Street and all. And it's the, called the uh, Shirton and Lackey Addition. And it's right off of, oh, it's on Highway 72, yeah. right as you turn. And, but anyway, uh, we were the third uh, people that moved up in that area. And then some people came there from Edna, Texas, and they built a place, and they called it Shady Grove. Well, it was a lot of trees. There were trees there. And that was our playground during the summer when school was out. That's where we, we played. All the neighborhood children played there. And, and they built this place, and they had tables sit out in the park area, and, and they had a dance floor there. And we all played and danced on that floor. And so uh, when they sold it, it was a, what do you call it, a saloon, beer giant? Or whatever yeah. you call it. Anyway, it was cafe and things, yeah, and we wasn't allowed to. We wasn't old enough to go to it. But it was right across the street from us, and it was well attended. And you could stay up all night long then. And, <laughs> and the music would get to get word by our parents, but it didn't worry. We tried to stay awake to listen. Mm -hmm. It didn't worry us, <laughs> but but uh, uh, it soon now they have uh, they have mobile homes there. Mm -hmm. out there and it it went away but anyway they brought the lumber and everything they had built and named it Shady Grove okay I, I, I still see we, we're not getting those good stories out of that place that I'm a little boy but I heard a lot of that that was also the place where the uh, the cir uh you know once a year when the what do you this you don't call yeah circuses, circuses will come. and and I can remember as a little boy man Every year we went to the circus there, mm -hmm. and one of the things that my grandma bought was the Watkins liniment. Oh yeah. And and man, you everybody bought it. The you guy couldn't it. keep enough like Watkins liniment. So, but I, I've heard a lot of lot of things. I, I guess I would have to have my uncle Mac tell me about those <laughs> those those things that happened in the Shady Grove area. Oh yeah, that was a rough place. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I can't get those stories now. <laughs> so, they gone on. Well, but they 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 happen. They, yeah. <laughs> okay. Shady Grove. Well, you know, we I was thinking uh, oh, a while back. Uh, you know, we have a number of streets here in Quero named from the black people. We have quite a number of those. TL over to, mm -hmm. I mean Tucson over to, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, I guess uh, Ross, Shitter Ross Road things, the, and okay, uh, a couple of that. Okay, I had wrote down a, a, a lot of those once I did it for Black History. I, I one one of the one of the people that that uh, that uh, I remember hanging around town. Uh, that that was a boxer one time, uh, and he 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 trained on the Bimbo Ranch in Yoakum, and uh, the guy had won a couple of big fights, and was was training to really get a a a, a big fight. I don't know. I don't remember if it was Holmes. Uh, it was either Holmes, Larry Holmes. Wait a uh, Cleveland Williams. Yeah, that that was his name. They, his name was Cleveland Williams, but I can't remember the. He he never made it real big, but but my my point is he had he used to hang around uh, in in Quero all the time, but he he uh, he. <laughs> I'd have to get this story together. That's why. Uh, but 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 that's one of the people that I I remember that that used to hang around here. And, and also, uh, there there was a there was a, a Prairie View track coach. Her name was Barbara Jacket, and she uh, she coached several Olympic teams. Uh, uh, 
and she she swim pulled off but she had a friend here that used to be uh, used to be a teacher her name was Ro uh rosemary what was it? Hmm. I can't think of her, but, but she used to come through here quite quite often too. And you know that Andy Rice, the uh, the uh, the professional football player, uh, Hallisville. Uh, from Hallisville, mm -hmm. he 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 ran the place that used to be Scott's place down there that I talked about earlier. And and from my area, we had a guy named Mac Green. Uh, Mac Green was an All American at at Prairie View, mm -hmm. and on that. Prairie View uh, uh, team, uh, when he was a senior, they were NAIA champions. They played out. They played in the bowl game out in 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 in, uh, in uh, California. From uh, that from that that football team, there was some like 13 guys that made it in the NFL, and 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 uh, several of them were household names like the Kenny Houston. Uh, the Otis Taylor, uh, the uh, Jimmy Kearney, Jimmy Kearney was from Wharton, uh, uh, Emmett Lewis, Vivian Lee, Alvin Lee, Alvin, mm -hmm. the Washington Redskins, or Alvin, the name. Anyway, I, I'd have to I have to think about this a little more, but but uh, those guys used to bring uh, used to Mac used to bring guys. Uh, McDaniels used to come home with him, and and I tell you, you know, uh, again, that's the other thing uh, that I, I think helped drew us together because the guys that have gone off and done well, they would come back to town and they would introduce you, you know, to people that are doing well or uh, better than the, the, than they are doing, and you know, and they would kind of in, inspire us to to. To work hard at doing what we do, so there, uh, there, there's a the, the young guy that that uh, my my cousin's family here. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she had a she had a she had a brother, Bonnie Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie Taylor had had the three little guys, uh, three. Uh, well, well, actually, he, he, Trooper. well, Trooper but but I, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of how he he had quite a few kids, but. Mm -hmm. But the ones that we remember, and, and I was looking at some information uh, the the other day. Uh, there's a new newspaper clipping uh, in, in the Quero Record. It said the the Magnificent Seven, and what they were talking about was uh, there were seven kids that that had that had went that had gone to the uh, state quarterfinal uh, the last year. Uh, the the year be, before this article come out and this was their senior year and just happened they did win the the state the next year but these guys were in a in a Quero record news uh, uh, news article and we uh, we know that 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 the oldest one that it, that everybody called Trooper uh, was a coach at Tennessee first and then he moved on to to Auburn he was assistant uh, head coach there. Uh, with with Cam Newton, so Cam Newton was one of his his uh, uh, prime uh, one of his uh, his students. He's now at uh, and he has a son that's in the uh, uh, college ranks now at Arkansas State, I believe, and he's a coach there. Uh, Trooper's wife was also an Olympian that ran uh, at Baylor during uh, years ago. So uh, again, I, I I I'm getting older. I don't I don't get back here as much on the weekends. But used to on the weekends, you could bet, man, it wouldn't be nothing for forty or fifty guys to be hanging out in somebody's yard, and they would be, you know, uh, introducing the kids to people that had, had done well or or people that are doing well. So we have a reputation of doing that, and I I hope the younger group keep that up but I, I don't see the camaraderie now that that we used to have and I I, I don't know if it's if well to be honest with you if you if you want to do well you know your chances are probably better off moving to a bigger a bigger city because oh, yeah. you're restricted to to what you can do uh, in this area 
So, uh, you know, we're happy to see people like Moss Ellis and Glover and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, your son-in-law mm -hmm. that, that's reaching out in, uh, in government to try to better themselves. But really, uh, uh, and, and I, I think that's why, that's why the camaraderie is not here is because too many of us have to move away mm -hmm. to, to try to better ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we don't. We don't have the uh, anybody to motivate the kids that are here. So you, you know, you it, it takes more than coming in once in a while giving a speech. You know, oh, yeah. you have to you have to you have to be there looking over the shoulder, really, to, if you think about it. Because that's what we you know we didn't always do the right thing, but but we knew somebody was looking over our shoulder. We better not be too much wrong. So that's that's why I think we don't have the camaraderie that we have now. But if I if I take away anything, if 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 I was anywhere and had to take away anything from what I what I uh, what I've learned, uh, uh, what I'm proud of most in growing up in Quero, and I've said over and over, it's 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 uh, the camaraderie, the the respect that the people had for everybody, That's you right. know the the, and and you know you can say that, but. But you have to you have to be able to do it up with follow it up with actions and and uh, we didn't have problems getting people to to step up. I I, I can remember when uh, when people went to jail, you know, and then I remember there was a group of few people in town that that they 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 didn't stay long because they would they would pool their uh, money or a mortgage or a land or whatever it was to get that person out of jail. And it would be the same thing with the funeral when people didn't have the the means to bury a loved mm -hmm. one. Uh, it, it, it wasn't long before there were a group of people that had banded together to, to make it happen. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I, I grew up learning those kind of things and that's something that I hope that I can uh, uh, instill in my grandkids. Uh, my kids seem to to be doing that now, I'm, I'm proud of them for uh, doing the things, the volunteer things that, that they do and, and uh, instilling in their little ones to, to do something to help somebody else because right, right. it comes back to you three or four mm -hmm. fold.